Hey everyone, welcome to this psychology lecture series. In this video, we are going to talk about paradigms of Western psychology. Paradigm is a distinct set of concepts or thought patterns including theories, research methods, postulates and standards that are commonly accepted by members of a discipline or group. Positivism was first proposed by the French philosopher Augustus Comte. This paradigm totally focuses on understanding the objects by empirical tests and methods such as sampling, measurement, questionnaire, group discussions, etc. According to this epistemological stance, what counts as knowledge can be captured through sensory information. If knowledge goes beyond this into subjective boundaries, such information does not qualify as knowledge. Positivists believed that science was the medium through which truth could be unraveled. The major advantages of using a positivist approach are Positivism relies on quantitative data that positivists believe is more reliable than qualitative research. Quantitative research is more scientific in its methods. Quantitative data provides objective information that researchers can use to make scientific assumptions. Positivism follows a well-defined structure during studies and discussions. Positivists believe that since there are set of laws and rules followed, there will be minimum room for error. Some of the disadvantages of positivism are Positivism encourages researchers to disregard human emotion and behavior. However, human behavior naturally comes with emotional responses. Positivists see things as they are and tend to disregard unexplained phenomena. This can eliminate lateral thinking which is the process of finding answers by creatively and indirectly finding out ways to solve a problem. Post-positivism came about in the 20th century. Post-positivism was not just a revision of positivism but a complete rejection of the core values of positivism. Post-positivism points out that scientific reasoning is quite similar to our common sense reasoning. The only difference is that a scientist would use a procedure in order to arrive at conclusions unlike a layperson. Post-positivists point out that our observation cannot always be relied upon as they can also be subjected to error. This is why post-positivists are considered as critical realist. They are critical of the reality that they study. Since they are critical of reality, post-positivists do not rely on a single method of scientific inquiry. These can only be avoided if a number of methods are used. This is referred to as triangulation. Karl Popper was a notable post-positivist. Positivism and post-positivism can be considered as philosophy used in science for scientific inquiry and could be considered independent to each other. Critical perspective in research has its origins in critical theory attributed to George Hegel and Karl Marx and critical pedagogy attributed to Paulo Freire. These important people focused on eliminating injustice in society and addressed inequalities and power differentials. Horkheimer, one of the founders of the critical theory, suggests that criteria for an adequate critical theory. They are, it must be explanatory about what is wrong with current social reality, 
it must identify the action to change it and it must provide both clear norms for criticism and transformation critical researchers use qualitative quantitative or mixed methods however it is mostly seen that critical research is more inclined towards qualitative research designs the three typical tools of critical research are ideology critic critical action research and critical discourse analysis ideology critic is a way of critiquing the ideology of the powerful group who use particular values and practices to exercise their power and get over the suppressed classes an ideology is an organized collection of ideas critical action research is another tool to uncover the unjust and unfair practices and ideologies prevalent in society and achieve the target of a balanced and just society it gives power to those who are operating in context of school curriculum etc critical discourse analysis is another tool used by researchers under the critical paradigm van dyck defined cda as type of discourse analytical research that primarily studies the way social power abuse dominance and inequality are enacted reproduced and resisted by the text and talk in the social and political context the theory of social constructionism states that meaning and knowledge are socially created social constructionists believe that things that are generally viewed as natural or normal in society such as understandings of gender race class and disability are socially constructed and consequently aren't an accurate reflection of reality social constructs are often created within specific institution and cultures and come to prominence in certain historical periods social constructs dependence on historical political and economic conditions can lead them to evolve and change the theory of social constructionism was introduced in 1966 in the book the social construction of reality by sociologists peter l berger and thomas luckman berger and luckman's ideas were inspired by a number of thinkers including karl marx emil durkheim and george herbert mead some scholars believe that by asserting that knowledge is socially constructed and not the result of observations of reality social constructionism is anti realist existential phenomenology is a philosophical development from the phenomenology seen in the work of heidegger where we try to achieve immediate and direct apprehension of phenomenon existential phenomenology deals with our reaction to understanding of phenomenon it deepens our understanding of the experiences and perspectives of others through its focus upon the meanings that we make in our lives and the choices that are reflected in our understandings and actions it seeks to develop an in-depth understanding of human existence this approach is inspired by the philosophical tradition developed by thinkers such as buber kierkegaard nietzsche heidegger gadamer de beauvoir sartre marcel merleau-ponty and lenin's the core belief of existentialism is the sign that is being in the world refers exclusively to human reality in contrast to non-human reality existential phenomenology is the merger of two streams of thoughts that is soren kierkegaard's existentialism and edmund husserl's 
phenomenology. Cooperative inquiry, also known as collaborative inquiry, was first proposed by John Heron in 1971 and later expanded with Peter Reason. The major idea of cooperative inquiry is to research with rather than on people. It emphasizes that all active participants are fully involved in research decisions as co-researchers. Cooperative inquiry creates a research cycle among four different types of knowledge. They are proportional knowing, practical knowing, experimental knowing and presentational knowing. The research process iterates these four stages at each cycle. The first phase in cooperative inquiry brings a group of people together who have common interest. In the second phase, the agreed upon actions are applied in the everyday life and work of people. In the third phase, the core researchers become fully immersed in their experience. In the fourth phase, the core researchers reassemble to consider their original questions in the light of their experience. In the next video, let's talk about paradigmatic controversies. I hope you like these videos. Please share these videos with everyone who is preparing for this exam. Thank you.